in this video i have explained what are ddl statements create table syntax and one example of creating a table like the video subscribe to the channel share this video link with your friends gain the knowledge and rule the world ddl data definition language it is used for the purpose of creating altering and deleting database objects even we can use for the purpose of creating database as well as deleting the database also the commands which are present in ddl are create alter and drop the principal logical data definition statements are for the purpose of creating a table is create table for the purpose of creating a view is create view for the purpose of creating an index is create index for the purpose of altering a table is alter table for the purpose of deleting a table the command is drop table for the purpose of deleting a view is drop view for the purpose of deleting an index is drop index command these are the various kinds of commands which comes under data definition language data definition language is used for the purpose of create delete and alter that means creating altering and deleting database as well as the database objects we will be learning in detail regarding all these commands in the next classes of my videos create table create table is used for the purpose of creating a table a table will be consisting of the column names it is also called as an field names in an rdbms terminology table is called as a relation so for the purpose of creating a relation that is a table we need to use the syntax of creating a table the syntax of creating a table is create table table name here create i have written in upper case letter a table i have written in upper case letter it is not mandatory to write them in an upper case either you can write in the lower case or you can write in the upper case or the combination of upper case and lower case just for the purpose of identification to know the difference between the keywords and the regular variables i have used them in an upper case create space table after that space table name so table name indicates the name of a relation which you are going to use for the purpose of creating a table example student employee project etc so these are the table names and the table name you can write either in the upper case or in the lower case but you need to remember what case has been used because dbms is case sensitive then after writing create table table name you need to open the bracket column 1 definition after writing column 1 definition you can write column 2 definition but it has been indicated in the square bracket that means it is not a mandatory it is an optional column 2 definition then again column 3 definition it is also optional like that you can write n number of column definition and the last one will be column n definitions and you can observe here column 2 column 3 column n definition has been written in square bracket that means these are optional they can be missed means there is no need of writing all those things except column 1 definition that means a table should consist of at least one column at the time of creating a table later on you can add column 2 column 3 etc by using an alter command then after the column definitions we will be writing a primary key definition this primary key definition is also optional the next one is alternate key definition 
it is also an optional the next one is foreign key definition it is also an optional after that close the bracket right semi colon here we learn in detail regarding what these definitions are the first one column definition where the column definition takes the form column name data type in the square bracket null bar not null with not null again within the square bracket with default bar unique so this is the form of an column definition so the column definition will be consisting of column name which indicates the field name of a relation or the attribute of a relation then data type which will be specifying the kind of values which you can store for that particular column for example if you write int that means you can give a numerical values if you write number of 10 that means you can give 10 values of integer is a whole numbers and if you write a uh, decimal of 10 comma 2 that means you can give 10 values but among those two should be reserved for a decimal place that means 8 for the integer part and 2 for the decimal part like that you can give the data type and that data type depends upon the type of the software which you are going to use for the purpose of creating the table check with the manual of that particular application or a software in which you are going to write this create table command then within the square bracket now whatever is written those are optional so among that first one is null so what actually the null mean null means that we can whatever the column you are going to give those column at the time of inserting should not be left empty that means it should not be a null if you want to impose a restriction that at the time of inserting a value to a table if all the columns has to be given with a value then you can use null option then another one is not null not null so null option if you give means that means you can give a value or you can skip a value whereas not null in the sense you should not skip giving a value to a column null means you can give a value or you may omit giving a value to a column whereas not null indicates at the time of inserting a value it means at the time of inserting a row or a tuple to a relation you need to give the values for each of the column so for which column name you have written not null that particular column has to be given with a value if you write null that means you may skip giving a value if you write not null that means you have to compulsory give a one then if you are chosen not null then you have two options one is a default another one is unique so you can use with the default option when you specify with the default option the rdbms will substitute the default values for example zero for the numeric data types and space for the character data type whatever the value you are specified with the default with that value it will be replacing if you are not going to give a value for a column at the time of insertion and another one is unique so this one you can give and when you are specified not null unique that means you need to insert the value for the column and the rdms will ensure that the value for the column or unique or in other words we can say no duplicates will be allowed that means 
the value which you are going to give for that particular column will not be duplicated that means it will not be repeated if you are repeated that particular value then it will trigger an error a error message will be displayed when you execute this particular command at the time of inserting right column name it is the name of an attribute or a field name data type which indicates the domain of the column null or you can give not null null means at the time of inserting you can leave without giving a value if you write not null that means you need to give a value for that particular column then with not null option we have two one with default another one is unique with default in the sense it will be giving a value if you are not given any value for the column by default it will be storing that particular value unique in the sense the value of an column will not be duplicated it will not allow for the repetition of the value for in that particular column the next is a primary key definition so it is an optional the primary key definition you are going to write either at the time of creating a table or by using an alter table syntax if you are going to write by using the primary key definition at the time of create table that means at the time of creating a table if you want to give the primary key definition then we shall see how to give that particular definition similarly alternate key definition and foreign key definition this is the description regarding the column definition primary key definition what actually the primary key mean a primary key is nothing but a attribute or a set of attributes or a combination of an attributes which can be used for the purpose of identifying a unique tuple in an entity means for example sno there is a student number that one we consider as a primary key because using the student number we can identify each individual student similarly in case of an employee entity we will be considering ssn as a primary key that means using that one we can identify the unique employee and in case of an dependent here we will be considering essn and uh, dependent name together as a primary key that means the combination of these two should be unique and it can be used for the purpose of identifying a unique tuple in a dependent table so primary key is nothing but attribute or a combination of an attributes which can be used for the purpose of identifying a unique tuple in an entity now we shall see about the primary key definition the primary key definition will be in this form primary space key within the bracket column name even if it is having more than one column name to be considered as a primary key then you need to write the column name separated with comma right here one example i am showing a primary space key within the bracket column name it is a one kind of a primary key definition there is a one type of primary key definition primary space key within the bracket column name primary space key and it can be written either in the upper case or in the upper case or the combination of upper case and lower case these are the keywords whereas the column name should be written in the same way as you have considered the column name at the time of creating the table so now example primary space key within the bracket sno so this one denotes that sno is a primary key for a particular entity for example this one i have considered for a student entity we shall see another one example primary key within the bracket dependent 
comma name comma ESSN close the bracket. So here as I told the second category of column name second category of an column name that means when we have more than one column name as the primary key in that case both the column names should be written separated with comma primary space key within the bracket dependent name comma ESSN so it is a primary key in case of a dependent entity then column definition primary key so it is another one way of specifying a primary key definition we need to write the column definition after the column definition we need to write the keyword primary space key so it is also used for the purpose of defining a primary key but this kind of a primary key definition can be used only if one column name is a primary key but if you want to use two column name together as a primary key that is two attributes combination of two attribute as a primary key then this kind of definition cannot be used example we shall see sno space int space not null so this is the column definition column name data type not null after that primary key so there is a space in between primary and key and you should not make any spelling mistake you need to write the spelling correctly if you make the spelling mistake then the compiler will give an error column definition after that primary key sno space int space not space null space primary space key so this is the two types of defining or having the definition of a primary key can be written at the time of creating a table and in 99.99% uh, .99 while executing the lab programs will be using the primary key definition of the form primary space key within the bracket column name so this one we will be using 99.99% foreign key definition what actually the foreign key mean the foreign key we use for the purpose of establishing a relationship between two entities that means one a one entity will be having a relation with an another entity that will be shown or that will be implemented by using the foreign key definition and that foreign key definition will be in the form of foreign key within the bracket column name so here it should be the name of the column for which table you are writing the foreign key definition after that references r e f e r e n c e s references right and this spelling should be correct after that table name so this table name indicates the column to which you are referring the column to which you are referring the column to which you are referring for that particular column what is the table name and that table you need to write after that within the bracket you need to write the column name references table name after that column name so here this column name is with respect to the table name which you have written example foreign key within the bracket dnu references department within the bracket d number so here dnu here dnu this one will be referencing a table called employee a table called employee in that one the attribute name is dnu and it will be referring the attribute d number which is present in the table department so this one we use for the purpose of denoting an employee is working for which department an employee is working for which department for that one we will be using this foreign key definition foreign key dno within the bracket 
references department it is the table name in that table it will be referring d number d n u m b e r d number it is the name of the attribute present in the department table and it will be referred by d n o and whenever you are inserting the value for d n o it should be present in the department table for the attribute d number and d n o and d number both should have the same domain that is the data type of that should be same another one example foreign key within the bracket mgrssn references employee within the bracket ssn here foreign key mgrssn is the name of the attribute which is present in the employee table and references is a keyword after that employee is the name of the table after that whatever we are done in the bracket that is the attribute with respect to an employee table so here mgrssn denotes the manager number mgrssn denotes the manager number and it is present in the table called department that means at the time of creating a department table we will be writing for in key within the bracket mgrssn references employee within the bracket ssn alternate key definition what actually the alternate key mean alternate key means it can also be used for the purpose of identifying a unique tuple in an entity but among the different types of values of an attribute which can identify the unique tuple among them we consider one as a primary key and the remaining them as an alternate key among the unique attributes means an attributes which can identify a unique tuple among those will be considering one as an primary key and remaining them as an alternate key how to write the alternate key definition the alternate key definition can be written in the form unique within the bracket column name unique within the bracket column name unique can be written in the either in the upper case or you can write in the lower case or you can write the combination it is an keyword and column name should be written same way the time when you have written the column name at the time of creating your table so column name should be exactly same name for which you want to specify the alternate key definition example unique within the bracket d name that means in a department table d number is the primary key other than d number even the d name it is a department name will also be unique that means that can also be used for the purpose of identifying a tuple but since we have written the d number as a primary key we consider d name as an alternate key and that can be defined by writing u n i q u e within the bracket d name unique within the bracket d name the another one way also we can specify the alternate key definition and that one is during the column definition itself by writing d name space var char of 20 not null unique so d name var char of 20 not null after that you need to write the keyword called unique that means it is an alternate key right and it is not necessary uh, to define the alternate keys as i told which are optional and which are not optional one at the time of creating the table now i will create a table called student by using the syntax which i have explained now so first we shall consider what are the attributes to be taken for the student table or a student entity the various attributes which i will consider for the purpose of creating a student table is s name s no b date gender address course class so now we shall write the create table command create space 
table space table name so table name is student after that open the bracket first attribute name s name after that space the data type for s name where care of 25 then after that not null comma then the definition of the second column yes and o data type as int not null comma the next third column definition b date date not null comma the next the next column definition that is for an gender gender cat not null comma so here i have considered cat it means you can give only one character for the attribute gender when you are inserting a value for a gender attribute the next column is address where care of 35 not null comma the next course where care of 10 not null comma the next class where care i have considered here as an int you can also write as an where can after that not null comma next you have written the definitions of the columns now i will write the definition of a primary key by writing primary key within the bracket i will consider the primary key as sno so within the bracket i have written sno now you can observe sno attribute I have considered s as capital and here also i have written in the same way that means you need to write the column name in the same way how you'll be writing while creating the table then after that close the bracket after that semicolon after that you need to click on run if everything is correct then the table will be created like the video subscribe to the channel share this video link with your friends gain the knowledge and rule the world